What will it take for any of us to believe without doubt all that God has revealed in scripture and tradition? For most of us, it's a journey of growing in faith. Doubt is a very common spiritual struggle. And part of the reason that spiritual struggle is there is because in our human experience with other people, we might have reasons to doubt what they're saying is true. If I use the example of social media today, there's so many things in the world today that it's hard to know what's true. And so it fosters the spirit of doubt. Now, we need to be very judicious and not believe everything that we see on media. Not every human being is going to speak perfectly and authentically all the time. And so it creates this sense of unrest, uncertainty. Can I believe? As human beings, because of our human frailty, of course, there will be weakness. There will be times of failure. And when those times happen, it's so important that we turn to the Lord and ask for the grace to be filled with all that is good, true, and beautiful. It's also a challenge for us as human beings to spiritually have faith at certain times. For example, we're going through some difficult trial in our life and we may doubt that God is present that he's blessing us because he's not answering our prayer, for example. So we can have a spiritual weakness, a vulnerability in the area of not believing all that God has revealed. And when those times come, it's so important for us to ask God for the grace that we need so that we may believe without needing to see. Of course, the gospel today teaches us that profound example of what we commonly know of as doubting Thomas. Thomas is doubting that Jesus could have risen from the dead. And yet, Jesus had appeared several times and different people came. I have seen the Lord. And they were trustworthy people. But Thomas, in his obstinance of wanting evidence, was not willing to just have an open heart and to trust and receive that gift of faith initially. And God, in his great mercy, of course, provides him that opportunity by coming right into his life and say, okay, Thomas, here you go. Put your fingers into my hand, your hand into my side. and Be not unbelieving, but believe. Thomas, in his humility, then, of course, acknowledges that he was wrong. And it's so important for us when we have failed in the areas of faith to just turn to the Lord and ask for mercy. This weekend, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. Sometimes, as human beings, we have difficulty believing that God could forgive us of our sins or that we could ever forgive ourselves and be free from that burden. But it's true. God forgives sin. And he wants to free all of us from the burdens that we might carry in our mind, from things that we have done that we should not have done, or things we ought to have done that we did not do. In this month of April, we also remember in a very particular way that it is Child Abuse Prevention Month. And it's good for us to reflect upon how important it is for us to be attentive to children and to youth, to look for signs all the way from signs of neglect for a child, or whether it's verbal abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, whatever form of abuse it might be, and you yourselves, some of us, may have experienced that in our own lives. It causes so much hardship so much suffering. And so what the Lord wants us to do is to run to him, to seek out his love and his mercy, to be attentive to ways that we can really protect the children of the world today because they need to be protected, especially from the things in society which are bombarding them, tempting them to do things that are not of God, even to others. My brothers and sisters, Divine Mercy Sunday is all about receiving grace from God 
to trust him. St. Faustina is such a beautiful example. Jesus, I trust in you. When we doubt, make that act of faith. When we struggle, ask God for the gift of faith so that the faith of God can enter into our hearts, that we will not be unbelieving, but believe. My brothers and sisters, any of us who have had an experience of the presence of God in our life and know him to be true, we know there's ups and downs with life, and it's not that we're always up on the mountain on Tabor, where everything is great. Life's filled with a lot of trials and difficulties and sufferings. But if we lean into our relationship with God, we have the grace and strength we need to rise above the uncertainties of this world, even when we can't trust other human beings. We can always and ought always to trust that God is always faithful, a loving, merciful Father who wants to help us, raise above us, raise us above our human weakness, and fill us with his life and love. As we remember the children of the world, let us be attentive, especially those who've been offended in some way by others. Let us pray for protection. Let us be diligent in our actions. Let us help protect what God is intended to be that all the children throughout the world could grow up in a safe environment, an environment where they can trust those who are around them. But we must be very diligent because most abuse happens with those who know them most or have the most exposure to them. My brothers and sisters, the Word of God encourages us to be communities of believers of one mind, one heart. The second reading captures it so beautifully, beautifully. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Faith, and of course, the gospel. Peace be with you. God so wants to bring peace to the world, and all we need to do is open our hearts and believe what he has revealed to us. Allow our lives to be transformed by that grace and then to become ambassadors of all that is good, true, and beautiful in the world, and especially to help our young people on the way to heaven.